I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. I sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 291, where I'm going to show you how to return the last non-blank value within an array in Quantrix Modeler. This is something that I had to employ just the other day at my day job, and I thought it was pretty sweet how I did it. So I wanted to, of course, share it here on the podcast with you. I have here a list of locations, and by month, I have some sales by year. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to create another matrix that goes ahead and gives to me the last value, the last non-blank value by location. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag down my category tile of location, and then I'm going to say last sales because last sales amount, okay, or last sales quantity, it doesn't matter. So in order to make this happen, I'm going to use the select S function within Quantrix, and I'm going to say last sales amount equals select S. And you can watch episode number uh, 274 where I talk about select S for non-blank values. But what, what is my value range? It is the sales. That's what I want to return back. Uh, my test range is also sales. And my condition is a double quote does not equal, sorry, let me try that double quote again, double quote does not equal single quote, single quote for the blank, and then I surround that by a double quote, because that's my criteria, and what happens is, as I look at the dependency inspector here, I can see that this select statement, actually for Oak City, is bringing back eight values, and it looks like that's how many values I have here uh, accounted for in my uh, sales matrix under Oak City. So what's happening is this select S is bringing back a list of items, and that's the way it works in Quantrix. It, uh, it brings back lists. That's what selects and select S and all types of select do. They bring back lists. So I want to bring back the last value in this list because I'm looking for the last sales amount. So what I would do is I would use the last function, and I would simply wrap it in last like this. So again, if I were to look at my dependency inspector, I would see that it evaluates to eight items, the last of which is 193. So when I hover on the last, I get 193. And indeed, that is what I get here. And indeed, that is the last value in my array. Also, I would expect for, uh, for Fool Creek it to be 142, and it looks like it's working. This scales beautifully in the fact that if I were to add another year and say populate values here, Let's say in April, I have a value. In May, I have another one. In June, I have another one here. And then let's say in February, I had one. It would treat these values in this next year as the last as well. So that's how you would find the last value in an array. Uh, you can use the select, the select S and wrap it with last. If you have any questions about Select S or Last or anything in regards to Quantrix and its powerful capabilities, if you need help leveraging this tool, I really do hope that you will reach out to me at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com and ask me your questions because I absolutely love Quantrix. I also invite you to go to QuantrixAuthority.com and check out the uh, training that I have offered there. And please join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez. Today's podcast is brought to you by QuantrixAuthority.com. I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master.